So I've been using the Pocket 3 for almost nine months now. And in today's video, I wanna share my long-term experience using the Pocket 3. And I've been using this in all different scenarios like vlogging, to capture some cinematic landscape videos, traveling, and to make most of the videos that you see here on this channel. But is this better than just using your phone, which you always have with you anyway? Let's find out. When DJI released the Pocket 3 nine months ago, it felt like the biggest hyped up release in years because of its one inch sensor. But has it just been a hype or did DJI make the best pocket sized camera of the year? You see, it's easy to compare the Pocket 3 against a smartphone, other action cameras or even a compact camera which all fits in your pocket. But there's only one of these cameras that has a one inch sensor, dedicated cinematic features, tracking, vertical mode, time lapse, 10 bit, fast charge, night video, panorama, slow motion, three different focus modes, and a gimbal, all built into the camera, which you can access in a few seconds, the Pocket 3. Imagine when the original Pocket was released, for example, you probably wouldn't believe if someone said that in a few years, we'll have a Pocket camera with a one inch sensor that shoots better videos than some of the more expensive mirrorless and DSLR cameras. And not only that, there's also a variety of accessories that can be used to make the experience and the image quality better, like the magnetic ND filters, which lowers the ISO and shutter speed to make the image look better, or the wide angle lens, which allows you to capture a wider field of view. And one thing I really like is the protective case it comes with. So inside here, there's two spots for filters, either the wide angle lens, in the filters or a mist filter. What I really like is that I can actually stack the filters because they're magnetic. So I can have a wide angle lens and a couple of ND filters depending on the environment when I record my video. And this means that I don't have to bring an additional box with different filters. I can just keep everything stacked inside the uh, protective case here. Now, when it comes to image quality, Honestly, I am speechless. And I think the image quality of the Pocket 3 speaks for itself. Now, when it comes to user experience, it kind of feels like a mix between an action camera and a mirrorless or a DSLR camera, but on a gimbal. So the ease of use from an action camera by just rotating the screen and then press record, or I can even set it to record immediately after it's turned on. And also the same high quality stabilized image I get from my Sony A7S III here, but on a gimbal. And this is something that have changed the way that I shoot videos. So here on this channel, I do a lot of action camera and drone related content. And to capture the B-roll of all these cameras, there's only one camera I use, which is the Pocket 3. And this also makes the Pocket 3 one of my most used cameras. And not only that, but also my most important camera because all my talking head clips, B-rolls and slow motions that are shot outside is shot with the Pocket 3. And it's basically more convenient convenient to use the Pocket 3 because it has that gimbal and that means I don't have to mount my Sony A7S 3 on a bigger gimbal for them to start the whole balance process which is always a pain. And when I shoot these b-rolls here on this channel I can easily swap between the different modes like normal 4k 30fps or 4k 120fps slow motion for example. But the downside with 4k slow motion is that I can't zoom. And this is something I do or prefer to do when I record videos in slow motion because it just looks so much better. So that would be the only drawback or con if you ask me and I wish we could get this with a firmware update in the future. But what helps though is that I can still zoom in 60 FPS and with a 30 FPS timeline I can also slow the clip down to 50% which always helps. 
Another thing I really like is also the motion time-lapse feature that we have on the Pocket 3, which makes everything look more dynamic. So instead of having those static time-lapse shots that you get from a regular action camera, for example, or your phone, I can use the pre-made presets or I can set my own custom waypoints and make it look exactly how I want. And this is fantastic. And this kind of reminds me a bit of the X4, which shoots 360 time-lapses, which I can adjust later in the Insta360 Studio or mobile app. But the differences here is that with the Pocket 3, I don't have to go through a software in order to make the video look good. Now, when it comes to color grading, this is a huge part of the Pocket 3 because it shoots in D-Log M10 bit and uh, the color grading is a huge advantage with the Pocket 3 or DJI products in general because with the D-Log M10 bits on the Pocket 3, the Mini 4 Pro and the Action 4, I get much higher dynamic range which means I can easily color correct and grade the footage with my signature LUTs which has been developed to work with DJI cameras and this makes the whole process much faster and for those times I feel like using the normal color profile it's even easier just record the video apply my LUTs and I'm all done and if you're looking to get my signature LUTs I'm also having a 40% off right now so make sure to check them out down in the description below now, when it comes to audio with the Pocket 3, I always prefer to use it in combination with the DJI Mic 2, which came with the Pocket 3, and I think this combo is untouchable. The audio is amazing, but even without the DJI Mic 2, the built-in microphones on the Pocket 3 are some of the best I've experienced. This is the audio coming from the DJI Mic 2, and I gotta say, I just love this setup. Everything I have to do basically is to turn on the microphone and it will automatically connect directly to the Pocket 3 and I will be able to capture amazing high quality audio. But if you don't wanna get the creator combo or the vlog combo, which includes the DJI Mic 2, this is what the audio sounds like coming from the built-in microphones on the Pocket 3. And this is the audio coming from the Action 4. And what's really good about this as well, just like the Pocket 3, DJI Mic 2 works seamlessly with this as well and that's basically what you get when you purchase DJI products everything works seamlessly together which is amazing and as a reference this is the iPhone 15 Pro Max and the audio coming from the iPhone's built-in microphones how does this sound in comparison to the Pocket 3 let me know in the comments below so if you're looking for a high quality, high end camera with clear audio at the same time, the Pocket 3 might just be the camera for you. Now, in terms of battery life with the Pocket 3, I would say it's been quite solid over the past nine months. The battery lasts up to 166 minutes. I'm getting about 140, 135 minutes, but I also have the extended battery grip, which adds that extra juice. And with some on and off shooting, I'm able to capture videos throughout the entire day. And uh, when I get back to the hotel, for example, I just put it to charge and it's ready within 30 minutes. Or even if I just need a quick charge, it only takes 16 minutes to charge from 0 to 80%, which is insane. Another thing to note is that these batteries are also hot swap batteries, which means that if you're running low on battery on the Pocket 3, you can just attach the battery grip directly to the Pocket 3 without having to stop the record and turn the camera off to charge the battery. So if you're recording a longer video like an interview, a concert or a show, for example, and you have a few of these battery grips, you can just swap between these batteries without having to stop your record which is fantastic. So I would recommend getting the creator combo which also includes this battery grip and of course the DJI Mic 2. This is not only going to give you more battery life but it also helps you get a longer reach when you're out vlogging for example or shooting cinematic videos because on its own the unit is fairly small. But like any other camera I also have some cons. One being that it doesn't rotate fully 360 degrees, which means that I have this hard stop. So if I want to record a walk by shot, for example, I need to remember where that stop is. And sometimes I have to go back, adjust the position and do it all over again, which is quite frustrating. Another con is the field of view and how narrow this actually is if you're not using the wide angle lens. And even with the wide angle lens, you're only gonna get 108 degree field of view, which is pretty narrow compared to the 155 on the Action 4. 
The next one is waypoints in normal video mode. Since we already have this with motion time lapse, there's no reason why we shouldn't have this in normal video. But I do think this is gonna come in the future. Hopefully it's coming in the future. So DJI, please make sure to add this to normal and night video as well. I would love to have these waypoints to utilize every single aspect of this camera and have fully control over how the movement is gonna be. That would be perfect. But all in all, the Pocket 3 is a fantastic device, whether you're a beginner or not, this thing is so easy to use and the image quality is untouchable. And let's say you have a person uh, or a product, maybe a car or a motorcycle you want to shoot some B-roll of, you can use Active Track on certain parts to make sure that what you're trying to capture is always gonna be in the frame. I also have the macro lens from Freewell and this is actually pretty cool. Not something that I use on a daily basis, but if you're the person that loves to get real close to subject objects, you know, nature, these are actually pretty good. I will leave a link to them down in the description below if you want to check those out. Um, so yeah, it's a fun way of using the Pocket 3, I would say. Not something I use on a daily basis, but definitely cool to have. But as a cinematic vlogging camera, it's hard to beat the Pocket 3. It's only 179 grams out of the box. It's small, lightweight, and easy to use regardless of experience. The Pocket 3 can also take photos. However, the con here is that these photos are only captured at 9.4 megapixels, which looks all right. But I would expect something better from such a high-end Pocket camera. But something that helps is that you can also capture raw photos if you want more flexibility in color grading, but because the photos are captured at 9.4 megapixels, there's not much room if you want to crop the photos or print the images in a large format. But with that said, the photos are more than good enough if you just want to post some images on social media. Now, when it comes to active track, it's hard to miss that this is the most useful feature on the Pocket 3. And over the past nine months, I've been using active track almost daily to shoot B rolls and A rolls, and it never fails. And this is where the Pocket 3 wins over something like a smartphone or an action camera when it comes to solo filmmaking. I can just place the Pocket 3 on the ground or on a tripod, and then I can set it to active track myself, and I get these dynamic shots as I move around, which is important impossible to get with the other cameras unless you buy an additional gimbal. Now, when it comes to overheating, this is always a question when it comes to these cameras. And from my use, I can say that this has not been an issue. But I also wanna say that 99% of the time I record my videos outside. And here where I live in Norway, it's usually windy and the temperatures rarely exceed 25 degrees Celsius. However, I have been taking this on a few trips and I would say the Maldives was probably the warmest place I've been so far with the Pocket 3 and still in 40 degrees Celsius, I didn't notice any issues with the battery, overheating or the general performance of the Pocket 3. Now, the biggest drawback with the Pocket 3 is that it is fragile. You can't treat this like a normal action camera, and that's something you have to remember when you're out using it. It has a mechanical gimbal, which will break if you drop it, and it has a large rotating touchscreen, which might tear over time depending on how you use it. And there's actually no removable lens cap on the camera itself, so if you scratch this, you would either need to send it back to repair or just replace the whole unit. So DJI K-Refresh is a good alternative here to keep your Pocket 3 protected. So in case you damage it, you will get a replacement unit at a lower cost. But as you might know by now, I love the Pocket 3 and it's actually hard to find some real cons that would prevent me from buying this a second time. But there is a few things I would love to see upgraded in the future or upgraded with a firmware update. The first one is basically really important to me and that's being able to zoom in slow motion. For me, this is essential when I shoot my B-rolls and it just adds that extra depth of field which I feel I'm missing. I would also like to see in the future on the Pocket 4, maybe some built-in storage, similar to what we have on the Mini 4 Pro. This would be really handy in situations where you've been out filming for a whole day, but there's just one more shot you want to grab, but your SD card is already full, so you basically have two choices, which is either to delete one of your previous clips or to miss the shot. Now, because the Pocket 3 has a low light feature, a one-inch sensor, and puts out amazing videos, 
I would love to see a dive case made by DJI and not a third party company with a weird name. I feel like this is the only thing that I miss to take the full advantage of the Pocket 3 when I'm out traveling. And because I spend so much time in the water when I'm on vacations, I feel like I'm missing out. So please, DJI, make a proper dive case for the Pocket 3, that would be amazing. But these are basically the upgrades I would like to see in the future. Now, as of low light videos, the Pocket 3 is just outstanding. There's not much that comes close to the quality of the Pocket 3 in low light. Personally though, I rarely shoot low light videos, but the Pocket 3 might actually have changed that. The more I use it in low light, the more amazed I am with the image quality. And I feel like this in combination with the night mode on the Mini 4 Pro could potentially be the most affordable professional low light combo available. Now, the question is though, is the Pocket 3 better than a smartphone or an action camera? Well, the Pocket 3 has a mechanical gimbal versus the electronic image stabilization which we have on a smartphone and other action cameras. So this means that the Pocket 3 doesn't have to crop the image in order to stabilize it, which is something you see in a phone or an action camera. And this often results in a worse image, especially in low light. So here the Pocket 3 wins. In low light, the Pocket 3 also wins because it has a one inch sensor, which really helps in low light. And it also has a better dedicated low light video mode. And this results in a much sharper and more detailed low light image. And the ability to put the Pocket 3 down and just start tracking yourself is something you just can't do with your phone or an action camera by itself at this quality. So again, the Pocket 3 wins. Now, the last question is whether this is a camera worth buying if this camera is for you and if you should buy it. My answer is yes. It's so easy to use, it's so portable, and I just love the protective case it comes with, which also lets me keep some extra filters in place. The image quality is untouchable in my opinion. And like I said in the beginning, I've completely replaced my Sony a7S 3 for all outside shots. And I think that says a lot about the Pocket 3. So if you're looking to start a YouTube channel or to get a new camera for vlogging, or you create cinematic videos, maybe you just want to do some family trips or all of the above, and you want the best bang for the buck, and you don't want to compromise on quality, then the Pocket 3 is what you should get. And if you're curious to see how this holds up against the Insta360X4, for example, which also has a tracking feature, then click this video right here. And if you're looking to enhance your Pocket 3 footage and make it stand out from the crowd, check out my signature LEDs down below.